I was surprised today that I got challenged by oh some internet stuff that lots of times that I try to get the most productivity that I can out of posting. So I try to use different ways and means of posting to multiple blogs and sites and websites and sometimes <laughs> they throw a, a hurdle in front of me that I have to come up with some type of workaround solution to create a alternative to posting so that way I can get the most productivity I can out of what I'm doing for production wise. And boy, <laughs> when, when sometimes it hits you first thing in the morning, it's kind of a challenge. And the nice thing is that as far as the techno technology end is concerned, the tech end, you know, it came up with a solution. Now, making that work every day is a challenge, you know, because it takes a lot of extra effort and maybe not more time in the long run once I accrue a routine for it, it'll be faster and it does seem to be in the long term, if I was using a flow chart, more productive. So I thank God for it, but man, it's a lot of work. <laughs> but changes like that, sometimes, you know, life is going to cause you to change and adapt to it in ways that may be challenging to you at first. And in the long run, it's actually better for you, though you may not see it in the short term. Now, for me, in this technological end that I can see, I already knew that this would be beneficial. I could see in my quick fix workaround that it would actually be a better way to do things in the long term. And so I usually come up with those types of solutions before a crisis intervenes in order to cause me to do that. I'm always one of those innovators that's trying to create a better way or come up with a better solution or a, a more productive way of doing things. And normally that works in business, but this time in ministry, usually what happens is that God intervenes. <laughs> he tends to kind of come through and go, uh, you know, you're working too hard, we're going to do it this way. And all of a sudden it's like, boom, crash landing. And it's like, what? I just got used to doing it some other way. So the humorous part is that today was, wow kind of hit me between the eyes and kind of threw me off kilter. It was like, wow, what a surprise. Because on the one hand, I had changed some things to to adapt them to be more personal and real, you know, because I wanted to share more of what's going on, you know, at the moment, you know, and especially in meditations, which we started using, starting your day with Joyce Myers. But I began to also discovered that there were issues that, you know, challenged me in time. Well, this gave me more time in the long run, though the short term it may be challenging. So it's kind of like, wow, what a different mindset. And my brain has to change its way of doing things, you know, it has to reformat and restructure the steps that you take in order to be productive in certain ways. But you know, that's kind of what God does anyways. You know, He wants to change our way of thinking. He wants to redefine us and redesign us in a way that's better able to be used by him but also to communicate with him. That's why we read the Word of God daily. That's why we study and we apply those beneficial tools to us that would help us in our daily walk. It's kind of like why would you want to go out, you know, in the morning, you know, and read a devotional, that's a bummer. You know, I mean, why would you want to do that? And that's kind of what sometimes I think people don't realize they're doing is that they start their day off with bad news and things that are happening in the world and they get themselves off on the wrong foot and then they have this whole mindset that everything is influenced by the glasses they're wearing because they didn't start off in a positive way. And I'm not saying the power of positive thinking because, you know, we all go down. I mean, I have my emotions. They go, you know, and I go, oh, 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 you know, and have to you know, duck and cover and run for my own emotions because <laughs> I can go all over the gamut of uh, feelings. <laughs> but my faith is solid, it's steadfast, it's founded upon the Word of God, but it's also established in my relationship with Jesus because I depend on Him to relate to me as I relate to Him. I count on that interpersonal relationship that Him and I share. 
So that way I know he's there and I am aware of him working in me. Because without that, I would just be a dogmatic religion that would be working a salvation message constantly over and over again to where it would be boring or it would be kind of like stupid and kind of like, you know, preaching and not, you know, sharing and relating the fact of I'm excited to be alive and to be living in the world that's going to see Jesus return. Wow, that's kind of neat. Man, it makes it kind of worth it, you know, to go through this turmoil and tr struggles of the world as it's giving birth to this new kingdom that's coming, the kingdom of God on earth. You see, that's what the earth is like. It's like going through birth pangs, getting ready to be reborn into what God would have it to be. Because it is under a curse, and all of creation groans and travail, waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. Did you know that the earth itself is waiting for you to be revealed? Yeah. God wants to unveil you even to yourself. You don't know how much God has changed you and rearranged you and made you into the person you're becoming. Until he reveals it to you, you won't know because he's keeping you concealed so he can keep working on you in his own way. I think that's kind of special. I think that's kind of neat and exciting you know, to see how God works it out in us as he changes us from glory to glory into the image of his incorruptible son. Man, I'm kind of looking forward to being like that. I even reckon all things as pure loss because of the priceless privilege of knowing Jesus my Lord. Shining is always costly. Light comes only at the cost of that which produces it. An unlit candle does no shining. Burning must come before shining. We cannot be of great use to others without cost to ourselves. Burning suggests suffering, and we all suffer. But we do shrink from pain. We don't like pain. We are apt to feel that we are doing the greatest good in the world when we are strong and able to be active duty for others. And when the heart and hands are full of kindly service, we think that we are at most benefit to our Lord. When we are called aside and can only suffer, or when we are sick, or when we are consumed with pain, when all our activities have been dropped, we feel that we are no longer of use to God that we are not doing anything productivity-wise as far as the Kingdom of Heaven is concerned. But, if we are patient and submissive, it is almost certain that we are a greater blessing to the world in our time of suffering and pain than we were in the days when we thought we were doing the most of our work. We are burning now and shining because we are burning. The glory of, the, the glory of tomorrow is rooted in the drudgery of today. Many want the glory without the cross and shining without the burning, but crucifixion comes before coronation. Oftentimes, most people forget that we do take up our cross daily to follow Jesus. We must deny ourselves. We must put ourselves on that cross and then look at the world in a different way with a perspective that looks for the opportunity to share Jesus and what he's doing in our life in a more intimate way and to be aware of those times that we might be able to help someone along their way. It doesn't mean always preaching the Word of God or sharing some scripture or always you know, saying, well, I'm a Christian, let me tell you all about it. No, sometimes it means just loving in a place where someone needs to be loved. Sometimes it's about caring in a place where no one cares. Sometimes that light that you are needs to be a light and not a mouth. You see, Light doesn't require you to speak. Light requires you to just simply be there. And because you're there, Jesus inside you shines forth the bright light of what you're doing. Because sometimes actions speak louder than words. I know people that I've helped at times, you know, I've gone over to a neighbor and just picked up trash that was in their yard. I've gone to a friend's house and just cleaned their house for them. I've been, at different times, anonymously done things for people that I'd rather not talk about because <laughs> I want to keep my blessing. But the point being, you choose to do things that inspire others to turn towards the good and not the bad, to turn towards godliness and not worldliness, to turn towards being more than what they are. Some people call it paying forward, some people say do your tithing or do your good works. But you see, your Heavenly Father knows what you're doing. You're doing that. 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 You're doing
just go about your daily life living as though you were the most important person in the world to influence those around you because the world is full of darkness but you are not of the dark but you're of the light you're children of the light and children of the day and when it comes to helping preserve the world when it comes to helping to be influential not with your words or your you know provocations by let's go start some great movement you don't need to start a movement all you need to do is offer a helping hand and you'd be surprised that the person who is your enemy if you help them will turn into your friend to join you once you begin to help with your kindness rather than with your preaching or teaching oftentimes it just takes two open hands and a warm hug to change someone's life forever and believe me the world is miserable and it's passing away but you are the one who's saving it from itself so all of creation while it groans in travail waiting for the revelation of the sons of God you could be about the Lord's business right now today using your opportunity just to share in a simple way things that don't necessarily need to be said but need to be done and you know what they are because God's inspiring you to do them